This is 2015 Subaru Forester. It's got the regular four cylinder in it. This thing has got a roaring noise when you drive it down the road. I suspect it has a bad rear bearing. We're going to check it out. We planned ahead a little bit on this project and we ordered up a kit from Detroit Axle. It comes with two of the bearing, rear bearing assemblies. It comes with two rear rotors, the brake pads, and they even throw in this uh, brake force cleaner and brake fluid kit, all from Detroit Axle. The total cost of this kit was $180.33. And I had to order from somewhere else, I had to order some lug nuts because when I was taking the wheel off, the other night to check this bearing, I broke one of the wheel studs off. These are real easy to over torque. These are really small lug nuts and they're kind of fine thread. And they only torque about, about 88 pounds. So if you don't, if you put them on with an impact wrench, like the guys did that put the tires on a while back, and we've not had them off since, then the only thing you can get them off with is a breaker bar and it rings, rings the studs right off. So I know I broke one on this side, I bought 10, just in case I break one on the other side, I'll change all 10 lug nuts. We also got two Subaru wheel nuts right from the mothership. Its part number is 902170049. It's supposed to fit this 2015 Forester, but I think it fits other stuff. One of the reasons you're supposed to reuse it is it's got a, uh, lip on the edge of it whenever you take the other one off it straightens that lip out and you could reuse the other nut but the biggest thing is they don't want you to over torque these bearings when you put them on i think they torque it this nut torques it somewhere around 140 pounds i believe on this particular car uh, we'll, we'll double check and see but i got two of the wheel nuts anyway uh, i know i got cheaper bearings and i got the factory nuts but it's it's over 200 bucks for the subaru wheel bearing so so I'm cheaping out a little, but I think they'll work just fine. If you go to any parts store, you're going to get probably the same Chinese bearing anyway. It doesn't make any difference where you buy it unless you go straight to the Subaru. Also got a case of brake parts cleaner. And I'm going to try this new stuff. I've never tried it before. Uh, it's supposed to be made in the United States. It's a Dinko. Dinko. So we're going to check it and see how it does. But we may end up using the brake cleaner that comes with the kit. We may not even break into this, but we're going to try it out down the road. We'll let you know in a later video how this stuff does, just to see if it's going to be any count. I never heard of it before, but it's, it's, it's fairly reasonable, and it is U.S. made. I'm going to start this project by removing the brake caliper. Ordinarily, you would just leave the brake caliper attached to the mount and just take the mount and caliper off and lay them out of the, out of the way. But since I'm going to be replacing the rotor, and the brakes, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this caliper off. I'm gonna loosen them up here. Okay, I've got the brake caliper bolts out. I'm gonna lay it out of the way. I keep saying caliper, so you just have to forgive me. I know it's caliper, but one word's as good as the other as far as I'm concerned. Man, that one's on there. It's probably got some Loctite on it. We'll check it and see. Let's make this easier. Let's get the ratchet. I know I'm breathing right into the mic. I'm sorry. Take this whole assembly off and we'll clean it and reload it later. It's got really good brake pads on it. It really doesn't need rotors and pads yet, but I'm going to change them anyway. Now we got to get this rotor off and sometimes it can be challenging, but I'm going to do something and I'm going to use some air. I know this is not a something everybody can do or everybody has in their shop, but I'm going to use some air and I'm going to use the hammer attachment. And I'm going to go up before I take this rotor off, I'm going to get this nut off because I can use the emergency brake. But also when I get ready to take this rotor off, I'm going to uh, 
use the air hammer to go around it and that'll not only loosen this rotor up but it'll also probably loosen that uh, bearing uh, inside of its housing a little bit these bars are probably overkill i've got the biggest bar we got 32 millimeter socket i've got it ways i'm not worried about running the studs because we've got all new ones oh she's loose and we should be able to zip it off there with the impact the bar the weight of this bar by itself just about just about takes it off all you're trying to do is overcome the tab that's been in i'm gonna go ahead and leave that on there i'm just gonna put it on loosely this back up here and now I'm gonna get some air set up and start hammering around the face of this I'll probably put a little WD-40 on here too compressors on it's a little loud first we're gonna take the, the pin and then right inside of here there's a little divot I'm gonna knock this axle back a little bit You can use a like a dead bow hammer and a punch as long as it's a pointed punch to get back in there now i'm going to switch to the hammer head this one's got a hammer head on it Seem to be moving, but I can see some rust coming off. Just a dead blow hammer. I did spray some lube on there. I didn't have the emergency brake on. I decided not to do that. Now, well, here's the inside, the guts of the whole thing. We should be able to get this out without disrupting these brakes, I believe. Next thing we gotta do is get the bolts out of the back. I believe that they are also 14 millimeter, but I'm not sure. socket back in there and see yeah they're 14s i'm going to try to get this wheel speed sensor out and i'm just going to use a extension to kind of knock it around a little bit yeah, it's shorter i guess i already got the 10 millimeter bolt out let's kind of knock it knock it back and forth until it comes loose should be able to get it right out. It's what reads the back of that bearing. You don't want to break this. There's a possibility that when you, if you leave this in, when you pop this hub off, that's a axle, axle will shoot forward. When that axle shoots forward, it'll knock the end of this wheel speed sensor off. So it's best to try to get it safely out of the way. Put it back up in there for now. Yeah, try not to get hung in it, I guess. Had to get an extension to get those four bolts out of the back of this hub. And I don't know if you can see it, 
but the bolts are back here there's two in the back and two in the front that go into through the back you can use an extension and go right through this all this stuff these rods and axles and things and get it right out i just used a uh it's like an eight inch extension and a deep well socket now is the hard part all the bolts is out you don't want to destroy this backing plate i have a tool that you can put on here and you can pry against this knuckle but everybody says not to do that south wayne auto especially says not to do it because what you'll end up doing is you'll end up breaking these ears off and you'll have to buy the whole entire knuckle assembly and we don't want to do that so i'm going to try to come up with a way south main he takes these brakes off i believe and he he welds a bolt right to this hub a nut then he threads the bolt in and it jack kind of jacks it out of this backing plate here but i don't want to do that either i've seen other guys they buy this big tool that bolts on here and it's got a big long extension you hit it with a sledgehammer and it shocks this out i don't want to do that but i'm going to try to come up with a hybrid solution i have a tool that i used to use to pull hubs off of uh old cars i've done it in one of my videos now this tool is made for rolling fenders you bolt it to the hub and then you roll your fender lip so you can put big tars on like these lowered nissans and cars like that why i have that tool i don't know i was going to roll my nova fenders i guess so i could put fatter tars on it but i didn't use it for that but i have used it to pull drums off and it bolts on just like one of that flange that you hit with a sledge i'm going to try to bolt it in here and just use leverage and then try to vibrate this out see what that does now here's a piece i can get to work it just fits on the hub it's got this lever in it and i really like to make this thing face outward that's going to hit that it's going to hit this thing i don't want to bend that so put this back in I'm hoping leverage is all it takes. But who knows? Don't want to hit the car either, of course. Ooh. That's snug. Oh, hit the car a little bit. pin start to get it slightly uh, probably make a sledgematic work well that idea kind of died i thought it might work i thought i'd get enough leverage on it it would pry this out but it doesn't work that way i do have this weird puller that's for like regular ones that you're not supposed to use because of these tabs but i thought if I could get it on there, if it would reach over this, I could put something like a block of wood and catch that frame back there. And not it, That's pretty solid. Maybe you catch a block of wood and come out here to this bolt and just crank it out. Let me put it on there and see where the slot lines up at. Well, the hub remover tool didn't work. There's nowhere to put it back here without breaking these ears off. I tried to put a wedge of steel in between here and here and press it against it. And all it done was just bent the cover. So you don't want to do that. So don't do what I've been doing. Um, I've got one more thing I'm going to try before I do it the way South Main Auto does it. If this thing, next thing I try doesn't work, then we'll have to go the South Main Auto route. Looks like this isn't going to work because it's not going to fit on here. Nope. Too small. Let me fiddle with this a minute. I know I've got the hub attachment out again, but hear me out here. Let's get this set up.
Come on now. Phew. All right, I'm just about to surrender. I've got about every tool in the box out. I can't get this thing to budge, so I'm gonna tear it down, take the emergency brakes off, and probably do it the way Eric O said to do it in the first place, uh, South Main Auto. So we'll be back. I'll take all this stuff apart and try to put some of this stuff away. Things have escalated. This, got the middle hub out. This is the way South Main Auto does it. They they weld two nuts on there to the hub itself. Then they jack it against the backing plate. And he said most of the time it works. So I haven't tried it. I've been letting it cool. Nope, my wheel's coming loose. Wow, look at that. Now what do we do? Well, I don't want to destroy this thing, which I just about did. I'll have to cut that off and try again. Okay, I missed it, but I got this side out. Um, I had welded that bolt to it and of course it just snapped right off so what i wound up doing i don't know was that weld no it's just grease what i wound up doing was uh of course the flange is not on here but i put a chisel down behind this back side and a chisel down behind that side and slowly hammered them chisels in until it finally snapped loose and but look how rusty i mean it is just nasty we got a lot of salt here. I, I live in the south, but but uh, every time it gets a frost on, I think they salt the roads here. So a uh, good thing I took that sensor out because when it popped out, this axle shot out there and it would have broke that sensor right off. So I can't believe it came out. It's all rusty down in there too. But uh, I didn't bat damage the backing plate too bad. Um, there's where I put the first product the first time and then Let's see, I don't know where we pried it the second time at. Hmm. Maybe it's just that one dent. It's been a little, but I think it'll be okay. I'll hammer it back out. This piece here's thick too, and that, that holds it in there. I like never got it out of this. I had to beat it to death. But it's out. And it's it's like late at night. It took me about four hours on and on to do this. And I'm going to clean this hub out. I don't think I've damaged anything. I got a little chip right here. That was where I tried to come in from the side. Like somebody down in one of the videos. And it didn't work. So I got to grind this back flat. I don't think I hurt the hub. Got a little chip up here too. I'll grind this back flat. And get all this cleaned up. But I'll do that tomorrow. When we come back. It'll be a few seconds for you guys. But it'll be a little while for me. I'm killed. It's the next day, and I've taken a fresh look at it. I've got this all cleaned up here. Got all the rust the best I could out. I used this little, like a little polishing wheel on this this air tool. And now I've got to get in. I'm going to get inside this backing plate here and do the same thing with it and just run it around it and get that rust out. But I'm also going to get down in here where this sensor goes, and uh, I'm going to use something different to... Uh, get that out we're gonna make it up real quick what i'm using here is just a it's just a cotter pin with uh some memory cloth I just like a butterfly in there. 
to get all the rest out of it for the whole of the center load. It's just a just a big Carter tube split pin. It's like I need to turn my paper around because it ain't getting a whole lot of abrasive. Just gotta <clears throat> run the other couple of bolts in. I did put some fluid film. I cleaned the hub out and cleaned, put some fluid film in it. That way, hopefully, it won't rust itself shut again the next time. <clears throat> this is a kind of a cheap bearing, so may wind up having to change it again sooner than later. But uh, we'll torque these bolts down. I don't know exactly yet what this is. I think it's somewhere around 60 or 70 pounds. I'll look it up and then. I think it's 140 on this wheel nut, and then 88 pounds for the studs. You really don't want to over torque these studs because they're kind of fine thread and they're little bitty lug nuts. So you want to make sure you torque everything right. I didn't put any Loctite on these. Um, I didn't get fluid film on them either. I did get fluid film on everything else, but not the bolts. I'm going to torque these and they should be just fine. I think that when they come off, they had some Loctite on them, some white looking stuff, but we're going to let it go like that. Oh, it's, <clears throat> at some point I must have put it on camera, but uh, got the hub on there, and I thought the torque was 66 pounds on these. The only thing I could find on the internet for this 2015 Subaru Forester was 48.7 or something like that, 47.8. So I'm gonna go with 48 pounds on these four bolts that holds the hub on. And this one's 140 on this nut, and we'll do that if we get the brakes and everything on it. So I'm gonna have to crawl under the car to put this torque wrench on there. So I'll go down there and do that, then we'll come back. Okay, I've got the rear hub bolts torqued back here. Got the brake hose bolted back onto the spindle here, I had to move. Then I've got our sensor back in place, got it tightened down. So now we're ready to start working on the brakes on the front. I finally got the parking brakes back on there. It was a little more difficult than it needed to be. I didn't pay close attention when I took it off, so it wound up being a little tougher. Got a little greasy fingerprints on these. We'll clean them up and slap the rotor on there. Gotta clean it up first because it's still got shipping grease on it. There's the rotor on there. I've got it cleaned up. The e brakes are kind of kind of touching a little, not much. I'm going to wait and see how they do before I adjust them anymore. There it is all back together. New brakes, new rotor, new wheel hub. Now i got to put the center nut on and torque it. And that should finish it with ready for a wheel. Now that that nut is torqued, don't forget to peen your little lock nut back down. This is a brand new nut from the mothership. It's, got, it's supposed to be knocked into this notch. That's all you gotta do is just a little bit. That keeps it from backing off, even though we've got it torqued. That'll hold it on there good, and it won't go nowhere. Well, I'm back from the test drive. I didn't bring you guys along because it was dark. But look what a mess, all the stuff. Welded bolts, everything. I got one side done, but <clears throat> there will be a part two to this. I've got one more side to do and I've still got all the stuff from the other side for Detroit Axle. Another rotor, another bearing. And it went together pretty good. It came apart awful. I don't suggest, oh, this would be hard to do in your driveway. I've seen people do it, but I've watched a dozen videos. Everybody done it different, but it seemed like everybody was having the same kind of problems. But uh, that was definitely our noise. Our noise is gone. We took care of it. I'm nasty. I'm covered with grease, but it's over and done. Next weekend, we will have a different kind of tool. So we'll do a, t a part two to this with that other tool and that'll take care of it. Hopefully the new tool 
that everybody's using and swears by will make this other barrier be much, much easier. And that would be, if it works out, that would be one I suggest people try. But we'll see how it is first. It's about 40 bucks on Scamazon. And we'll just have to get it and see what happens. And we're going to work on this engine some too. I've got some. I was saying a minute ago before it said dead battery and it's got a full battery in it. This is our Vortec engine that goes in our blue truck. I was saying once again, before the battery ran down, this is our 350 Vortec for our blue truck. We've got the crank block and everything done. We've got some new bearings. We're going to go ahead and put the crank and the rear seal in. And then we'll wait on our pistons to put our rods and stuff in. But that's for another time, another video. We also got that hood to weld up that I'm using as a work table right now. But it's my stuff, so I'm not worried about scratching. I'm going to be finishing it and painting it anyway. But thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you hanging out with us and join in next week when we do another adventure to try to finish this stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay clean.